Hello and welcome to the Daily Brown Bag. Today we're going to be talking about the impact of anonymous comments. I'm Chad Hill and I'm joined by Adam Setzer. Yeah, good afternoon and welcome to the Brown Bag. Yeah, this issue of anonymity online is one of my favorites and Chad, we used to talk about it a long time ago, way back six years ago, when we were just getting started in the SEO reseller community and surely the internet's changed and there's a lot less anonymity than there used to be but it's still out there. We had a brown bag the other day and we were talking about uh, Barry Ritholtz who had just written 30,000, finished his 30,000th blog post, which is quite a record. But one of the conclusions uh, that we came uh, out of that brown bag, Jeb, was that comments have really lost their value and they aren't what they once were. The volume's gone up, the levels of spam have gone up, there's a lot of hate-filled rants out of there, there's a lot out there, there's a lot of politically charged comments uh, that people are leaving and maybe they've been hired or, or who knows if they're paid. Um, spam is just out of control as I mentioned and more and more sites are moving towards a verification process and several steps and hurdles you have to go through before you can leave a comment. Um, today we're talking about this issue and I want to point out a study here Chad uh, from Livefire. They uh, asked 3,500 adult consumers in the US about some of their behaviors when it came to leaving anonymous comments and about 60% of those surveyed said they'd never left a comment at all, anonymous or otherwise. That was 60% of the 3,500. So over half just read and are out there seeking knowledge but don't really want to discuss. Uh, 1,300 said they had commented online uh, when they and when they were filling out this survey. A few other stats here: 40% uh, admitted admitted to using an anonymous profile or a, you know a fake name when leaving a comment. Although 88% of those people said they still use their real identity sometimes when they do comment. So it kind of, I guess, it depends a little bit situationally. So I'm interested in what we can make out of these results, Chad, and what we think the motivation is for using real identities versus wanting to be anonymous online. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Adam. And to continue with some of the stats here, uh, when you ask the question of what their motivation is for not using their real identity, 48% um, said that they felt that they could be more honest uh, with an anonymous profile. 34% said it was for other reasons, things like protecting personal security, avoiding bias, and then 5% uh, said that they, they did so because they wanted to say something uh, mean and didn't want to say it with their real identity. And uh, I think that the place that the, the same group said that the places they comment anonymously the most, 50% uh, on news sites, 45% on political sites, 19% on personal blogs. I can attest that if you ever read the Washington Post, it's just amazing what goes on in the comments um, and on at each and every story in the post. Uh, but um, I guess the other question they asked was where people are most likely to use their real identity and 83% said it was on sites that they frequent where obviously there's some connection or some uh, feeling that they're a part of the community there. So I think that um, you know where that kind of takes us is that you know 59% of all sur of everyone that was surveyed um, said that anonymous comments do have some value um, to them it, it just as much as, as real names do. So, you know, people are able to express their opinion and make valid arguments even if they're not putting their name behind it. And I know that's certainly been the case, I'm sure, with you too, Adam, where you can read people's responses to things and even if it's a silly name, uh, you can still see a good, well-thought-out argument, an intellectual argument that uh, either supports or refutes something else in the comments or in the post. So it's really still, I think, in many cases, the content um, you can see through stuff that's that's real versus someone trying to advertise or promote something else. So I think that um, you know the question here is like, should you or should you not try to manage the comments in your website? And Barry Ritholtz, who you mentioned, said that his uh, his basically requirements for posting comments has grown from something from one or two paragraphs to I think in the article it said that it's up to something like six pages now of just how he has to go through and explain his moderation and what a valid comment is and what a valid comment isn't. So, you know, I think that, um, you know, clearly comments are a great way to get some feedback on the effort that you're pouring into these posts and Barry Ritholtz is a 30,000 post out there. Um, clearly you want some feedback and to sharpen your thinking and understand what questions people might have. But, you know, I think the, the real trick, trouble we all have here, Adam, is that um, you, have, you have to wade through uh, 50 horrible comments for every legitimate one it just is a lot of work for not a lot of return. Yeah, and, and the psychology behind this is also just fascinating how people are more likely to be mean or, or negative to other people when they're anonymous 
and uh, that's just fascinating. I'm not sure why that is, and, but people just need to do it. It needs to be an outlet, but I, I do think it's dragging the overall quality of the dialogue down, so it is an interesting phenomenon, and the spam, of course, is just out of control. Uh, anyone who's tried to manage a comment section understands without some sort of uh, mechanical protections, there's just no hope. So that's our coverage today. We'd like to hear your comments on comments, and we'd also hope that you'd subscribe and share this video. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>